Alright, hello you lovely people. My name is Mr. B3 Cubed and welcome to the very first tutorial using After Effects slash Premiere, any of that stuff. So today, what I'm going to be teaching you is how to create this really awesome transition. It's basically this circle that comes out of the middle, it switches your footage or image or whatever you're making, and then it shrinks again. So, let's just go ahead on the timeline and show you exactly what I mean. And if you missed it, let's watch it again. So yeah. I think it looks pretty cool. It is actually in effect done in After Effects, and then bring uh, I brought it over into Premiere, and then added some sound effects. I think it looks pretty awesome. So the first thing we're going to do is go into After Effects, and we're going to create a new composition. Uh, and the composition window is over here. We're just going to call it uh, Circle. That sounds good. Make sure it's 1920 by 1080. Our duration only needs to be about five seconds because we're going to shrink it still anyway. And make sure your background color is set to something like lime green Whoop. so anything just bright green or something that you're probably not going to have in your footage because we're basically using this as sort of a green screen uh... you can make your frame rate whatever you want but i prefer to use sixty because the, the higher your frame rate is generally the more smooth the animation will be let's go ahead and push ok so here we have our background and uh... it's green so we're going to do a right click and create new solid by the way i do kind of expect you to know how to kind of sort of use after effects um, so we're just gonna call this circle. I just realized you're not supposed to do that. Never mind. I was usually thinking of that for the background, but whatever. So let's go to our rectangle tool and switch it to ellipse tool. Now while holding shift, click and drag to create your ellipse. We're gonna make it about that big. Push V to select your selection tool. And we're gonna go to the align tab and align this up with the center. And if you don't know how to get to your align tab, just go to window and then look for align and it should pop up somewhere. So now what we're going to do with our shape layer is we're going to push S to bring up the scale keyframe and we're going to go to uh, this little 100 here and change it to 0. So I have to make it small enough so you can't see and you can actually click and drag to make it bigger and smaller. I think it looks kind of cool. Uh, so we're going to do that and we're going to put our keyframe down and then we're going to go to about one second hold shift if you can uh, it makes it easier and we're going to create another one just by pushing that button then we're gonna go halfway in between about right there is good and we're gonna change this to 100 or no we're not gonna change it to 100 I just realized because 100 is not the entire screen we're gonna keep dragging this up and up and up and up until it reaches the very corners of the screen and it's slightly out of proportion let me realign this real quick there we go now drag it until the corners are lined up like that so the entire screen is blue now so basically if we watch the animation from the very beginning it comes big the very screen then comes back out again we just deselect it so it looks a little more fluid and that's the simple animation itself now what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag to select all these keyframes and we're going to push F9 and what that does is it does a thing called easy ease which makes the uh, motion kind of come in and then bounce back I think it looks rather good uh, one thing I added into my uh, demo test is um, motion blur, uh, but I don't think it's fully necessary because you have to play around with the green screen a little more to get it not showing the green. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the motion graph right here, and as you can see we have this little thing going on right here. Um, what we can do is click on the thing, not double click, and now we can just adjust our bezier handles and bring it out just a little bit more. So now it's going to be more of a it comes in fast and then slowly goes back out, sort of. Let's go ahead and uh, adjust our work area to match just the one second here. And we'll go ahead and preview it. Seems kind of slow. I was just kind of happy with it already. Uh, let's just drag these out a little more. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and push Control M. And we're going to go ahead and output it to our place of our choosing. I'm just going to do it here. I'm going to call it Transition Blue because I do plan on adding different colors to this eventually and it's not very hard either. You just add a color overlay. So uh, we're going to go to our settings here, make sure it's all good the way we want it. And let's see, go to QuickTime for me and then go to Format and change the codec to Animation. So do that and once you have all that, just go ahead and push Render. This should only take a couple of seconds because it's a really simple animation. and it makes that ever so satisfying sound. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my videos and I'm going to find where it was located and we're just going to go ahead and look at it real quick. Once it decides to load. Okie dokie, never mind. What we're going to do now is we're going to open up in Premiere. We're going to grab our file here. Let me just go ahead and create a new project once the uh, file tab decides to work. I don't know why, this is just such a weird bug, it just takes forever. New sequence, and we're gonna go, just gonna leave it as sequence two. Go to custom settings, we're gonna go to custom, change it to 60 frames per second again. Square, all that stuff, AVI, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just push okay, and so now we have our second sequence here for me, but it doesn't really matter. So what I have here is I have my first source here, which is my image. I'm gonna go ahead and resize this really quickly. I know this is probably not the most efficient way to resize things too, but you know, it just works, so whatever. Uh, and then I'm gonna drag in my second one. Let me just go ahead and make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. And then our second thing here, and I'm gonna go ahead and push plus, 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 and that way it makes it a little easier to see where to go. Now we're gonna take our transition, and I already had one made that looks a little bit more fine-tuned. We're gonna go ahead and drag it right onto the middle of it. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna make sure it's at its max right as it's going. So if that doesn't make any sense, basically right here on the timeline is right where where they decide to kind of twit switch. And right here is where we wanna make sure the circle is biggest. So right here, making sure the entire screen is, you know, like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on Oh yeah, this is the one that has motion blur too, by the way. This is completely nothing. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our video effects, and we're going to go to keying. We're going to go to color key, and we're just going to click and drag it straight to our transition.mov. We're going to take this here, and we're just going to select the green color of our backdrop here. And so now, as you can see, we just had the circle here. It looks pretty awesome. So I'm going to stop it right about there. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some things with edge thinning and color tolerance. Now, color tolerance, because this is motion blurred, this is a big mistake. Don't motion blur your transition. It just makes it a little difficult. We're going to drag our color tolerance up a bit. Uh, about 50 works for me. Uh, just to make it a little more uh, seamless. And then we're going to edge thin it. Till about there. And you can feather it too if you want. I don't personally like to do it. But I mean, if that's kind of your thing, you can do that. I'm going to turn up the uh, color tolerance just a bit more. That works. And just check it all the way through to make sure there's no green. Alright, it looks good. So let's go ahead and push enter to render it. And now I'll just go ahead and watch it really quickly. It's really just simple. So now if you want to add sound effects, let's go ahead and drag that in. And we're going to make it bigger so we can see the audio levels. Now let's go ahead and find the one that we were looking for. I like that one right there. So let's go ahead and select our razor tool. We're going to go ahead and chop it on both sides. Select V again just to go back to selection tool. Get rid of these. And we're just going to go ahead and do that. Maybe we'll want to do something like that. Let's see. I think it looks pretty good. And again, really, this is all about playing around until you have it the way you like it. That's the really awesome thing about using Premiere and After Effects. Um, but anyway, I'm glad that this is able to turn out in one take, and I really hope you enjoyed it, and please make sure to hit that like button if you liked it. If you didn't, you know what to do, uh, and tell me why if you didn't in the comments below. That was a terrible outro there, but anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.